Now I was buzzing up until the pre-80 and then it just went downhill from there for me. If we'd said sort of mid-season that you were going to be this close and chasing this hard with such a realistic chance of, uh, of lifting this year's Entertainers League, would you have believed us? No, not with the gap that there was, but luckily these last couple of meetings we pulled it back. Pulling into the pits and turning right, it was just something else. It's not so much of a stress at home because obviously we do all the cars from home in a little little double garage. A competition with a smile today, isn't it? Oh yeah, Connor's brilliant. I didn't know him until this year, like, and we've got on real well, talk most days. You don't need a whizzy engine and a million pound in your car to have a smile on your face. We're here, it's December, and it's the Adrian Flux Arena and the very end of what has been an incredibly long and hard-fought competition uh, for the Trackstar Entertainers League in 2023. and. Uh, Back at the start of the year, could we have ever imagined that it was going to be this close uh, going into the last meeting? No, I was buzzing up until the pre-80 and then it just went downhill from there for me. But it is what it is, isn't it now? It is the highs and lows of bangers, definitely. But uh, just talk us through the year. You say turning point was uh, was the pre-80. That was certainly uh, not a great meeting for weather. And uh, yeah, you had... A couple of cars that did very well and one that was probably a bit more disappointing. But, uh, yeah, you, you, you think that was the point where everything changed? Yeah, it was, definitely. That was my best meeting today, even though I had two good cars and one was just rubbish. Bit of a dream car it was, really, as well, so that's even more hurting. But, less we say, the better. <laughs> but, no, uh, my Triumph was brilliant all day. I love that. I'm looking for another one. Um, and the A60... I spun myself out so many times in it, I was dizzy by the end. But yeah, that that was the best day of the year. And then after that, it went downhill, I think. Struggled, re struggled really, but we're still here, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, still got the advantage, albeit it's, uh, it's a much slimmer advantage now as we go into uh, the last day. But uh, how, how are you feeling going into this one? Are you uh, confident that you can uh, can get enough out of the course to, uh, to finish the job off? Uh, no, the rubbish. I don't like them at all, but yeah, I'll just have to, just have to think about stuff instead of just going full out. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, certainly a, a measured approach. It's uh, not necessarily about the biggest hit of the day. I think uh, today it's going to count that you can actually uh, yeah put it about, be lively, but also be able to turn it around and fix it. That's, that's going to be a key part of, uh, of getting through today. Yeah, that was my trouble at Nutcracker. I smashed it to pieces and had loads of work to do in the first race. Um, but yeah, just try and be smart about things today and uh, hopefully Con Connor will be the same. He's smart. He's smart, to be fair. He's told me a few things along the way, but he's a good lad. He'll be all right. Yeah, it's certainly going to be a good competition amongst people. Yeah, it's it's been hard fought, but uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, yeah, amongst a lot of the drivers uh, around the pits, there's uh, there's a few feuds, but there's uh, there's a lot of friends here as well who uh, still like to hit each other, still like to put it about, and it's uh, it's going to be uh, a competition with a smile today, isn't it? Oh yeah, Connor's brilliant. I didn't know him until this year, like, and we've got on real well, talk most days, and it he's a good lad. He don't care. We could go out there, smash him to pieces in the first race, and he'll fix it and laugh about it. I just hope he doesn't set the team boys about me. <laughs> <laughs>
just taking us back through the year has this been a year that's sort of just turned out this way because you had a good start in the entertainers league did you have an idea in the back of your mind at the very beginning that you were going to go for it this year what what was the story behind the way the seasons turned out well i wanted to go for it last year but the year just did not start at all for me so we just went with the flow last year and then this year i was a bit more calm said to pete if it starts, it starts, we'll just keep going at it, and it just started brilliantly. And I, I couldn't put foot wrong at the beginning, but then, like I say, it, it calmed down a little bit. But I'm still leading, so a lead's a lead, isn't it? Absolutely. It's down to 25 points now, but it's still a lead, and, uh, yeah, all you've got to do is uh, play that sensible game today and, uh, yeah, drive, drive with your head a bit, and, uh, yeah, you, uh, you may well come out on top still at the end of it all. Yeah, we'll just see what happens. Uh, other than this is it today, next year, just dead quiet, do what I like, do what I feel. Um, try and get my lad practicing as well. He's, he's at the age now, so my focus will be him next year. Um, but yeah, f hopefully finish on an eye today, have a good day. I enjoyed it last year, so we'll see. Excellent stuff. Well, we wish you uh, all the best of luck with that, and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing how how things fare next year. And uh, yeah, different focus, but still uh, still looking forward to doing a bit here and a bit around and about. Yeah, we'll still do a bit, um, but I want to do the meetings I missed out on this year at different tracks. But I'll still do the the select ones here what I want, and then see what happens. Then I'll probably be flat out again. <laughs> I said, I was telling myself I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. But you wait. I'll, I'll be flat out again, I bet. course at this stage of the, the year after all you have done and all you have achieved this year as well I'm sure there's uh, a whole list of people uh, some of who are very very obvious and uh, some who may be a little bit more in the background who uh, people don't notice on race day but uh, I'm sure there's people that uh, have supported you all the way through the year that you want to thank uh, at this point 
Yeah, definitely. Obviously, Pete Winter, without him, I'd have just been doing the odd few unlimiteds, I think. He's literally paid for everything from day one. Uh, last four years, really, he's, he's had me under his wing. And then this year's just been mental. We, well, we've done... This is Car 34, just for Kings Lynn. And I think we've done two other meetings, uh, World Final and Good Friday. So we're at, like, 36 cars. They're not cheap. Even costs are 250 quid for a shell now. Um, but, yeah, thanks to Pete for that. Uh, my little brother Jay, he does a lot what people don't see from me, so thanks to him and just everyone else what's chipped in through the days, come racing, my mate Steve who comes uh, to work when he's not working, he does he graphs for me every other, every two weeks or so he comes through for a day and he graphs. Um, and recently Craig, he's, he comes racing with me for the last eight meetings or so I think so thanks to him as well but yeah everyone everyone deserves a thanks if they're involved in bangers don't they one of the things that uh, was a first time for you as you said a lot of meetings done here at King's Lynn but uh, of course Ipswich was uh, one of the uh, away trips this year for the uh, unlimited speed with world final and uh, that was your first time there so uh, what what sort of uh, recollections of that night and uh, feelings did you come away with uh, yeah that weren't the the plan, I said from the beginning it weren't the plan, but obviously it was a big bonus. I was never going to turn the spot down, um, but when it come close, the few meetings leading up to it and that, and people was like, well, the points, are, Connor's creeping up on you in the points for the spot, I started getting a bit nervous. And then towards the end, uh, I was like, I'm doing this, this is it now. So I, I made sure I got that spot in the end. But yeah, have it, the car, starting the car, the paint job, sign, getting it signed properly, wheels, tyres, everything was all different to the year. And then pulling into the pits and turning right, it was just something else. Obviously, I'd done it the year before as last chance as, cha as Wildershell champ. Um, and I had a good night, but turning right just made the day there and then. That was it, done for me. Um, but then the parade lap with Pete driving me out and that, you know, he's never done that, I don't think. Um, and then, yeah, it was just, the, I had the most rubbish luck in the race, but I was already made up by then, so it didn't matter. And then I went out in the all comers and smashed it to pieces. And now it, it sits on a ramp and I think, shouldn't have done that. But yeah, it's bangers in it, it don't matter, does it? Yeah, it's certainly uh, something different. Obviously, uh, you uh, you missed the days of uh, of Wimbledon, but even now the uh, the big bowl, the uh, the terrace in Ipswich, it's uh, it's a special place, especially on a parade. I'm sure that's uh, that's quite special just to drive around and take it all in. Yeah, it was brilliant. All the the faces, what I didn't expect to see there, what was cheering me on from Kings Lynn. You know, people I've smashed up all year was there cheering me on. It was absolutely brilliant. I couldn't have asked for it to be any better, really. It was good, yeah. Excellent. Well, that's uh, yeah. It's it's nice that at least that was one of the chances that you got to uh, to spend some time away and uh, yeah, do something a little bit different in between all of this uh, hard chasing here at Trackstar. Yeah, even though it was it was a bit of a rush. It was only two weeks from the World of Shale to the World Final, so it was like strip one car, build the other real fast. But yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. Uh, I will definitely try and get in it again in the future, but not definitely not next year. <laughs> <laughs> Take a bit of time out and uh, yeah, come come back to it and uh, have another go another time. Yeah, I think everybody what qualifies wants to try and at least finish the race, so I, that'll be a target before I give up. I think finish that one race, see what happens.
enormous amount goes on in the background. Uh, a lot of nights, late nights, cold days, cold nights. It's uh, yeah, not not simple, and certainly yet yeah, to, to come out of a year having done 36 cars, it's uh, it's certainly a, a big effort, and uh, I'm sure well probably not taking them that long a rest before you get going again next year. But uh, uh, looking looking forward to a little bit of a breather maybe in January. Yeah, I am planned at any of the icebreakers, so be a nice few months I should think even though I, I didn't do anything in November but I was itching I wanted to be away I nearly took Jay, Jay spare car to the uh, old school teams but I, I turned my son around and said no <laughs> but yeah I'm gonna enjoy a few a few months off with the family and kids because that they've missed out so no one realizes what we put into racing even though I've had it easy this year been building most cars in work time but Still, it just it just takes it out of you. But credit to people who do it every year, non-stop. I don't know how they do it. I, I'm ready for a bit off after this. The weather's not helping my mind either. <laughs> Rain again. Yeah, not not been a great December for racing by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, we'll wish you uh, the very very best of luck today, and uh, just huge thanks from all the team at Trackstar for all of the effort this year. And uh, yeah, a well-earned break coming up, and we'll look forward to uh, seeing uh, seeing what you get up to uh, in 2024. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, I think it's fair to say the car and the bonnet does say it all, Connor. Here we are, at the end of the year, and uh, if we'd said sort of mid-season that you were going to be this close and chasing this hard with such a realistic chance of uh, of lifting this year's Entertainers League, would you have believed us? No, not with the gap that there was. But luckily, these last couple of meetings, we've pulled it back to obviously 25 points. And that's all down to this last meeting. Yeah, amazing, really. And uh, yeah, I, th I think it'd be fair to say at some stages in the, in the middle of the year, you were wondering whether or not to uh, to give up the chase. And uh, yeah, that that clearly now, knowing what we know, that would have been a wrong decision. And uh, how, how close were you to uh, throwing the towel in and con conceding defeat? And... Uh, how rough would you have felt if you'd have uh, yeah, had a random dream one night and realised it was going to turn out this way? I would have, I would kick myself, to be honest with you. Um, we got probably to the first van meeting and we were considering throwing it away, but I always knew deep down that I had the chance, so I had to just keep keep, keep getting Dad and my Uncle Keen because obviously they helped me out a lot, and without them I would not be doing it. Yeah, and well, as you say, it's 25 points now. It's incredibly close uh, right at the end. And uh, yeah, smile on your face. Uh, I, I think you know, we all know, you, there's a very, re very realistic chance that you can uh, turn effectively a, a whole year on its head right at this very, very last meeting. And uh, I think there's, uh, there's almost excitement there. Yeah, there is. It's not been funny. The bonnet says it all. I don't really need to say many words. The bonnet is enough. Yeah, it's going to be uh, certainly an interesting day out there and a uh, bit of sun peering through now. The rain, I think, has stopped. Oh. Hopefully that is the end of it all as well. So, uh, on yeah. Oh, you're, you're, you're going for a wet one. Yep. But look at last week. I pulled so many points back last time because I was keen. My uncle and dad were keen. And the day it's just a bit of rain and never hurt anyone.
been obviously a very hard year and uh, yeah the people behind you are a massive massive part of it so we'll, we'll do a bit of a thank you slot here because I'm sure there's plenty of people behind the scenes who uh, you want to express a lot of gratitude for for everything you've done because let's face it it's been a very long year and there's been a lot of cars along the way hasn't there there's been a lot of cars I'd like to thank my dad my uncle really without them I would not be doing it they help build the cars and then also like the missus is my mum my mum my auntie without them they, they don't see their partners because they're helping me rarely see my missus because I'm doing bangers and her family it just gets sometimes it does get the better of it all but you just have to grin and bear it sometimes and just say, look, this is the year, this is what I want to do. I've got to get on with it. Uh, Whip Street, obviously, down the side of the car. They sponsor us, literally, majority of the cars, majority of the spares, engines, gearboxes, the spares, everything. That, and the ability to be able to strip the cars there, get rid of the, well, get rid of the mess, so it's not so much of a stress at home, because obviously we do all the cars from home in a little, little double garage with no ramp everything's done on the floor yeah. and obviously we do have a lorry outside which we put the engines in and do most of the underneath but even then we, we struggle with the neighbours try not to piss them off too much just because at the end of the day next door is the old people we live in the countryside and easy easy neighbours is easy life really yeah yeah and that's it you know it's to a great extent for you guys it is a more old school sort of banger setup isn't it it's uh yeah, not, not the kind of facilities, not the, uh, the sort of equipment that a lot of people that are racing regularly uh, are using now. So uh, it's extra hard. And yeah, as you say, without the help of people like Whip Street, it, it would make it so much harder. Yeah, and, in, and more expensive for us.
So what, what happens from here? Obviously, the outcome of today, we, we don't know yet. It's uh, going to be hard for. That's uh, something that's definitely uh, going to be the case. But uh, if you win it this year, would you think about carrying on and trying to defend it? Or has this really been a, a sort of one-year special and uh, go, go back to uh, a slightly easier life uh, hereafter? No, this, this year has been a lot. Oh, I need to put some more time into my family and, and the relationships that I've not lost but put aside for racing yeah yeah so a bit of racing a bit more of a balance uh, for 2024 more so the other side of racing i don't plan on much next year i've done done 35 meetings this year which is a lot hope that it turns out well for you and uh, yeah fantastic comeback an amazing comeback and uh, yeah we'll see whether or not the uh, the story and the, uh, the dream finish is, uh, is about to happen in the next few hours. Yep, we'll do our best. Very, very good. And, uh, well, all it remains is to thank you from Trackstar for all of the effort that you've put in this year. Before we do sign off, though, any, any of the cars in particular that has uh, sort of stuck in mind and uh, has a special place in your heart? The car and the picture. Yeah. The, t the taxi. Yeah. It was... Obviously, we had a week to build two pre-80 cars because we had the World Final. We intended to do three, but we just ran out of time, and I thought I might as well have two good ones and three bodged together ones. Yeah. And it was auto, auto Volvo engine, original axles, original steering box. It had a bonnet stay as the gear stick, and it was probably the best car I've raced all year. <laughs> and there you go, all the equipment that people have, all of the prep, all of the time, and all of the... Uh, the trick parts that people use these days and uh, it's still probably less likely in this day and age but no. you can still have a good day in a in a, a very old school banger can't you you don't need a whizzy engine and a million pound in your car to have a smile on your face <laughs> excellent well amen to that That's, uh, it's definitely a good sentiment and this time i think we will end on that it's a good way to finish thank you once again and uh, all the best of luck for the next few hours today thank you very much Feel the blood creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gonna feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing Take me for granted and you know I'm leaving I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving I could take this crap from seeing to believing Got a taste for blood and my tongue keeps bleeding From the words I spit, so sharp, so freezing So cold, behold, frostbite they feeling I could tear you apart or I could go heal them Don't believe in faith, don't believe in ceilings I just need a taste and my mind starts feeling I don't pace myself, I grind on kneeling Got lust for change, I just love the feeling uh. I ain't gonna give up Got too little time, I'ma live up Head down, push forward through the tough times Cause anything worth doing is a tough climb Hope you're ready for a demon. I'm gonna feel the blood creeping up from the heat.